Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for coming. Um, I want to begin just by, uh, again, offering our condolences to the Daler family uh, and friends, uh, many of whom are here today, uh, but also acknowledge uh, the family of uh, Mr. Gutierrez uh, Gonzalez, um, Morales, I'm sorry, uh, uh, in the loss that his family has, has suffered. And certainly, uh, we're aware of the fact that not only does this have a significant impact on the families who lose loved ones, but also on the communities in which these heinous crimes occur. You know, I think that uh, it, it uh, even more um, uh, makes us understand the you know the resolve that we need to put into solving these cases, so that we can uh, so that we can address some of the community concern that uh, that is uh, that is obvious and apparent. Um, you know, I want to thank uh, the many folks that have donated uh, funds. Um, and thank certainly the Metro Denver Crime Stoppers who have been able, because of those donations, to increase the amount uh, that we're here to announce and, and the reward for information leading to uh, the, the solving this, this heinous crime. Um, and so at this time, I'd like to, to introduce Matt Clark, uh, who's going to uh, talk uh, about some of the specifics as it relates to this crime. So thanks, Matt. Thanks, Chief. Good afternoon. My name is Matt Clark. I'm the commander of the Denver Police Department's Major Crimes Division. Appreciate you being here today as we continue to work to resolve the case involving the murders of Emerald Vaughn Daler and Ignacio Gutierrez Morales. Nearly two months have passed uh, since Ignacio and Emerald were killed. And to this day, the department continues to devote significant investigative resources to the case, uh, as we do with every unresolved homicide. The investigators assigned to this case are diligently working to identify and apprehend the individual or individuals responsible for the deaths of Emerald and Ignacio. I'd like to provide an overview of the case for background. On Monday, April 24, 2023, Denver police officers were called to a restaurant near 38th Avenue and Raleigh Street on a report of two individuals who were possibly deceased inside. The responding officers and paramedics located two individuals, an adult male and an adult female, deceased at the location. It was later determined that the two had been shot and killed. At this point, we have not identified the individual or individuals responsible for these deaths. And we are here today with our partners from Metro Denver Crime Stoppers, as well as friends and family of the victims, to ask our community for assistance and announce an increased reward for information regarding this case. Anyone with information can use Crime Stoppers as a tool to provide information anonymously to the investigators. To date, we have received over a dozen tips related to the case, and investigators have followed up on each tip they've received. I recognize and appreciate the concern that exists for residents and businesses in the area, and I understand there may be specific questions surrounding this case. When verifiable suspect information is developed to include descriptions of people or vehicles, those uh, details will be shared with our community immediately. Please understand this remains an active investigation for the police department. Detectives and crime lab personnel have worked tirelessly uh, to identify the individuals responsible for the death of Emeril and Ignacio since April 24th. At this point, without having the offenders in custody, I am unable to provide a definitive answer regarding the motivation for these violent events. Investigators are considering all possibilities at this point. The police department's victims assistance unit continues to work with the family and friends of the victims to ensure they receive the support and resources that they needed. Again, I would ask anyone with information about these homicides or the identity of the individuals responsible to contact Crime Stoppers at 720-913-STOP. I'd now like to introduce uh, Mr. Danny Garaki, uh, representing Metro Denver Crime Stoppers. Thank you, Matt. Good afternoon. My name is Danny Garaki. I'm the Vice President of Metro Denver Crime Stoppers. I want to thank you for joining us. Thank you to Chief Thomas and Commander Clark and Detective Trujillo for all the hard work that they put in on this case. As most of you know, Metro Denver Crime Stoppers is a nonprofit 501c3 that is guided by an all-volunteer board of directors, a few of which have joined us today. By design, Metro Denver Crime Stoppers is here to provide our greater community a resource to anonymously submit information on crimes and wanted persons throughout the Metro Denver area and offer rewards for information that aids our law enforcement partners in their investigation. On occasion, we have members of the community reach out and want to assist in increasing rewards being offered. These are typically family members, friends, businesses, citizens to our communities, and even strangers halfway across the country that may have heard about the case on the news. This 
is such a tragic event, and we have an overwhelming support from the entire community, which has allowed us to increase this reward for up to 25000 As with most open cases, someone has information that will ultimately help law enforcement close this case and give answers to these two families. There is no piece of information that is too small. Anyone who has information is please asked to contact our hotline at 720-913-STOP. Ignacio Gutierrez Morales family was not able to join us here today. The family is understandably continues to struggle over his loss. And I am certain that if we can get Detective Trujillo and the rest of the detectives the right um, piece of information that we can provide this family with answers. Ignacio was loved by many and was a father, a brother, an uncle, a grandfather, not just another name. We're also joined by Emerald Vaughn, Dahl's family and friends. As you can see by the overwhelming support um, of family and friends here today, that these two individuals touched many people's lives and we are searching for answers for them along with our fellow community members. Emerald's husband, Andrew, would like to say a few words as would his sister, Danica, as would her sister, Danica. Andrew? Good afternoon. Uh, these last two months have been some of the toughest I've ever had to deal with. To look at that photo, and just know that she's not going to be here ever is really hard. But I know with the support of my family, friends, and this community, we can find out who did this and why. That's what we're looking for today. We're looking for justice. Justice for Emerald, justice for Nacho, making this that they didn't go in vain. So please, if you have anything, call Crime Stoppers, give them the tip. And please help us have some closure with this. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. I'm Danica, I'm Emerald's sister. The last two months have been a nightmare, in, for lack of a better word. Um, all I want is for my sister's murder and Ignacio's murder to be solved and for whoever did this to pay for it. So if anybody has any information, no matter what, even if you don't think it's significant, please come forward. Thank you. So as you can see, this has had significant impact on this family, significant impact on, on our community. And so we are dogged about our, our desire to, to solve this case. And so we certainly are, are uh, open to the community's help in that. So uh, with that, I'll answer any questions. Thank you for the question. Yes, the, we've narrowed the time frame to between about 10 o'clock in the morning until about 12.15 in the afternoon. There were other robberies of other uh, restaurants in that area in the past uh, at various times and such. Is there any indication that anything was taken which would lead you to believe that a robbery may have been involved in this? Uh, robbery is one of the potential motivations that we're considering in this case. We don't believe this is connected to any other cases that occurred in the area that we're aware of at this point. Well, this is a challenging, it's a complex investigation. Uh, we have an un unidentified offender who is, um, uh, you know, not coming forward. Uh, we, we have a lot of community support. Again, we're getting tips. We've reviewed and are gathering surveillance video. We're analyzing forensic evidence. So all this, the same uh, steps are being taken uh, as we would in any, any uh, homicide investigation. And we're working to, to resolve this as, as promptly as possible. Is there any tie that the uh, assailant may have had to the restaurant or any of the, the business people, or has that been uh, disclosed at this point? It hasn't been disclosed. It's being considered as part of the investigation, though. But you say you have not identified any offenders at this point or any leads in this case? We have leads in this case. We have not identified any offenders. Do you have any 
We don't have any, any suspect information to release at this point. No picture, no That's correct. Uh, other than Emerald and Ignacio, we're not aware of anybody else. So we're not able to disclose the evidence that is or is not present. We've done multiple canvases in the neighborhoods and, and did collect a number of videos and uh, private surveillance and, and ring type doorbell cameras. And if anybody has additional cameras that they haven't provided to investigators, we'd encourage them to do so. We haven't ruled that out either way. Uh, we're not uh, not able to disclose at this point how they gained access. What about a threat to others in that community or the expansion of business in that community? Uh, is there any concern that moving forward, before a people in that area? Certainly understand the fear. Uh, we have uh, individual or individuals who committed this crime who are not in custody at this point. Um, we would just advise people to be vigilant, be aware of the surroundings, um, take common uh, practices to secure buildings or doors that don't need to be open. Not that I'm aware of. So we're looking at all possible uh, motivations and, and interactions that the both individuals would have had prior to the incident. Prior to, to this incident, was there, did anyone in the family, friends, anybody say anything about these two victims, you know, being in terms of previous threats, anything like that? No, not that I'm aware of. That's certainly one of the things we're considering and we're, we're working and talking to former employees of the business as well. In general, when you look at what type of area does it when you take a look at crime, say, and I, I'm not asking for, for, asking for statistics, I mean, you don't have that in here, but say over the past five years or so, or even the past two years or so, what kind of area is that when we think about this kind of crime or low crime, this is something that never happens here, you see this before, that kind of so, you know, as you're probably aware, we look at our crime data pretty uh, substantially week to week. And so this area uh, certainly is an area where we have seen crime, uh, certainly nothing uh, like this. So this is not something that is common for this particular area. Um, obviously, we are responsive when we do see rises in crime, robberies, those kinds of things, burglaries, um, and try to you know try to identify patterns and things like that, and be responsive to that. Uh, and I think in relation to a question that was asked earlier, we understand that there may be businesses and you know residents, uh, community members in this area that are concerned after this uh, crime occurred. And again, uh, we ask that folks be vigilant, uh, and uh, those that may be. Um, concerned about uh, going uh, into business, opening businesses in this area, we would encourage folks to reach out to their uh, to their districts that, they, that they're opening businesses in or that they currently are engaged in business in, work with their community resource officers so that they can uh, work on safety tips, crime prevention through environmental design. There's a number of things that we can suggest to business owners to, to, to strengthen and, say, and uh, uh, target harden their businesses. Well, I guess the first thing I'd say is I have confidence in my homicide investigators to, to come to a resolve in this case. Um, certainly, we have seen uh, uh, cases where it has taken quite a bit of time in order to, to uh, find an offender and, and make an arrest and bring someone to justice. I mean, what comes to mind is the, uh, the Truckee fire case. It took six months in order to, uh, to, to bring someone to justice in that case. And so I am 
very confident in our team uh, to, to resolve this case. Um, I do believe that there uh, is an opportunity uh, yet again to bring this back to public attention by increasing the award reward amount and hopeful that, uh, that people that may have something that they thought was in insignificant um, some time ago now think that maybe, maybe I can come forward and, and provide that uh, insignificant detail that may actually help us break this case. There were a number of items of evidence that were collected and are being tested in this building, in this crime lab building now, but we're not able to speak to specifics on that. Um, all of our cases start out at up to $2,000. Our first, we've had anonymous donors um, increase the reward over the last two months. Um, we don't put out press releases. We, we try to captivate on when we can release that so it gets the most attention so we can get that information out there so we can hopefully solve this. So we've had a number of increases. I think there's eight or nine different donors. Most of them are anonymous that have donated over the last two months. Yeah, that'd be equal to 2000 It's one of our larger ones, yes, absolutely. Certainly, and as soon as we get credible information that we can verify uh, is, is representative of the suspect, whether a vehicle, an image, a person, a description to put out there, uh, we'll put that out there for community safety, for community assistance. Uh, but at this point, we're not prepared to do that. I think that's a large point of this conference is to, to ask, to beg the, the public out there to give us more information, to give to investigators to vet out. So we, there's information out there. Somebody has it. Somebody has the ring doorbell camera. Somebody was walking by, maybe heard something or saw something that was out of place or, or something. They have that information. That's what we're here asking for. And then as soon as that's vetted out by DPD, we can certainly get that back out and hopefully solve this crime. Um, <clears throat> So I appreciate the question. That's a specific detail we'd be withholding at this point, though. Well, thank you.